Hello, everybody, and happy Thursday. So we are doing questions and answers with Jen Carrasco. And um, let's start diving in deep. I hope you guys have had an amazing day today so far. So today, let's start this out. We are going to start with Rohit and his question is what are the best or most necessary apps needed for a Shopify store? The background is we just created our online store with Shopify and realized there's a lots of apps. Not sure which ones are most needed to have a successful business. So with that, I am going to actually hop on over to my Shopify store and I am going to walk you through what I have on mine. Because Shopify has some phenomenal apps now that make your store and the experience for your consumer a hundred times better. Okay, so the apps that I have to have in my store are the Zapier. Zapier is great because it automatically links my new clients to my different CRMs or reviews. The next one is Stamped.io. This is a phenomenal app. It will literally take all of your reviews and push them out to your social media platforms, but it also sends out reviews to new people. I use the Shopify email. I use the SEO optimizer. I have QuickBooks online. I also use Shoutout. Shoutout is a phenomenal ambassador profile. I also use Push Owl, which is a web push notification. I use a page speed optimizer, of course have Google, and I also have a fast checkout in one click. I have my Facebook, I have my e-translate on there. I also have the bold subscription for subscription database for people, and now by law you have to have the accessibility assistance for people. So that alone is what I use for my Shopify. So I hope that helps you. The next question is from Martina. It says, what sort of strategy do I have to do to achieve my target for this month to reach 2,500 points last minute goal? Description, I am an Herbalife marketing and personal training industry online. This month, my goal is to get even better over 2,500 points, which seems like a mission ATM. Been messaging people, adding people on social media, Facebook and IG, but not have much luck. I am determined, but how else efficiently to attract and to sell my nutrition programs? So this is one thing that I get asked actually about a lot of entrepreneurs. So the best thing that we can do is actually sell ourselves on social media, right? But not even social media. It's about having them know you, like you, and trust you. That is how you always grow a great audience. That's how you always grow great customers. But the first thing that I have learned in business is making sure that you give out education that you give out knowledge. And the reason behind that is because I sell a skincare line, right? I educate my clients on proper skincare. I educate them on products that they should be using, ingredients they should be using, how they should be doing it on their skin, what the benefits are, and go over all of that. And then what that creates is that creates loyalty and it creates honesty, it creates trustworthy. And then therefore, I start growing my clientele that way, right? That's the same way, even with a fitness professional, somebody who's selling, 
you know, Herbalife, somebody who's selling any type of thing. It's educating your clients and making sure that they understand everything. Not about just pushing a product, but actually talking about the ingredients, right? Maybe talk about B12 and what B12 does for you. And this is a supplement I use because it formulates B12 and helps it, you know, and keep going that way. Honestly, I wouldn't be going into people's DMs. I wouldn't be messaging people. I would be educating people. And then really making sure that you get your top 25 people that you're engaging with, that you want as clients going forward. The next question is from Corey Steffens, and it says, when do you know if it's the right time to approach your prospect with your product or opportunity? The background is, I am an independent distributor for a global health and wellness company, network marketing. After establishing a relationship with the prospect and building rapport with them, how will you know when it's the right time to approach them with your opportunity or product? How will you go about approaching them with what you have to offer? With everything in life, it's about sales, right? But the way that I've always created my estheticians in my clinic or even my electricians in the electrical field is you are not doing a service if you don't tell them about something that will benefit them going forward, right? So I am not doing my due diligence with not educating them about something that they can do that is going to better them in the long run. So. It's not about sales. It's not about pushing anything. When you feel like it's the right time to educate people about it, that is the right time we start educating. We don't push anything. We don't really prospect anybody. We're there to be good people to do the right thing and to educate them on the process of what can help them going forward. So if you have the time where you feel like you have that relationship and you wanna talk about something that's going to benefit them, that is not a hindrance. That's a benefit. So you definitely want to push forward with helping that person. You're doing a service for them. The next question that I got is from Shelly Merrill. What is your recommendation for handling the stress created from employee mistakes that you have to go back and fix? The background. Fire protection contractor. Just found out that an employee who is no longer with me had made a mistake on one of the sales tax rates for a particular city. I obviously can't write that person up or have a conversation. I want to scream right now. How do you handle this sort of stress? This is a great question because we all want to scream all the time, right? We all want to go punch a punching bag all the time. I deal with it all the time in every business. And this is what I came to learn. And this is even in life, right? Things with our family that we can't control. Is I sit for a minute with my anger and my frustrations. And I think back and think to myself, okay, what did I learn from this process? What did I learn? Okay, I learned that I need to set accountability this way. I learned that I need to put processes and procedures this way. I learned that I had to document it going forward this way. So I should be frustrated at me because I necessarily didn't put it in the right perspective that I should have for somebody else to understand that, right? It's always our fault as a leader. Always own the ownership of the leader that it's our fault, right? Doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. You learn from that and you progress to be a better leader. So that is how I've done it, is I've always looked back and thought, okay, what can I learn from this? Going forward, how can I change this to where this doesn't happen again? And I breathe through it. Now, if I'm extremely frustrated at somebody and I can't get myself out of that state, that is the time and place that I need to take care of Jen. 
That is the time and place I go get a manicure, pedicure. That is the time and place I go get a massage because I cannot get my mental state out of what it needs to do without actually taking care of myself. So that is huge. As every entrepreneur we are, we are busy, we are go-getters, but we lack taking care of ourselves. So if you're at the point where you're frustrated, you need to stop and you need to go take care of yourself, okay? That is the biggest, biggest hack I can tell you. Next question is from Carrington Crothers. Is it beneficial to engage with companies' prospects on social media organically before reaching out to them directly? The background, I am a commercial brand photographer specializing in e-commerce marketing brand specific products I recently brought on someone to manage my social media because I was not being consistent and I am actively trying to be better. Does it make sense to engage with brands for a period of time before reaching out to them directly or does it not make a difference in just prolong the sales process? So my answer to that is um, I do a thing called the Dream 25. And I do that in all my businesses, right? The dream 25 are the people that I want to get as a client, the people that I want to engage more. So what I do is I make it an effort that I engage in all of their social media, all of their posts constantly, right? Maybe like a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, until I get that engagement to where maybe they're commenting back on me and then we're getting, we're getting a protocol going together, right? Once I get that set, then that's the time to go in and reach them personally. But I don't go in reaching them personally about selling them something. I go in to reach them personally on how I can help them with something, okay? So I go in with, how can I, you know, how can I help you with something? Eventually maybe say, hey, I think that maybe this picture or this thing on your website should be altered a little bit different. It would drive more traffic in. I'm just letting you know because I would want somebody to let me know and I really want to help you. It's always about helping somebody else. It's always about giving that extra to that person. That way you create the trust loyalty and they want to do business with you. That is how you do business. It's always about doing the right thing, always about going over and beyond, and always about doing for others a little bit more than we would ever do for ourselves. Next question is from Rohit and it is, what are the best or most necessary apps needed? Oh, I just did that. I'm sorry. Um, okay, that's it. Last question is, how do you overcome fear of disappointing people? Background question. I constantly struggle with the balance of standing up for the best interests of my business and family versus telling people things that I'm afraid will disappoint them. What tactics, mindset, strategies, etc., do you use to help yourself Say what you truly needs to be said and accept whatever the outcome is. So this is a great question. <laughs> the reason why is because it really boils down to how well you're doing the right thing for you and your company and your family. We need to not take criticism from other people because they're not in our shoes. Think of it this way. I've always explained this to everybody. I'm not going to take advice from somebody else because they're going to look at it with their point of view. They're going to look at it as how it affects them, not how it affects you. So when I make goals or situations in my life, I look at it, how is it going to affect Jennifer? How is it going to affect my business? How is it going to affect my family? 
and I do what is right for that. I don't look at somebody else's opinion. I can call somebody and ask them their opinion, but the only thing it's going to do is hindrance me. And the reason why is because they're looking at it from their point of view of how if you do this, this that's how it's going to affect them. I hope that makes sense. So for instance, if you 100% believe in something and it's for the greater good of your business, your structure, your family, your core values, and somebody doesn't like that, you don't have to align with them. That's okay. But you need to just let it go. As you grow, as your business gets bigger, as you profit more, you are not going to appease everybody and you have to be okay with that. You have to know that it doesn't matter. I'm going to give a scenario. I am coaching right now a blue singer. Now, she is up front, you know, everywhere on social media, on YouTube, doing videos, everything. And people comment all the time to her, wow, she's overweight. Wow, she's this way. And just critique and critique and critique. And the thing is, is that you have to build a strong enough skin to withstand the fact that people are going to criticize you and people are going to say things. But don't look at it as a reflection of you. Look at it as a reflection of them. So I want to say thank you. Thank you for having me this Thursday. I hope you guys have a phenomenal weekend going forward. And um, I will see you next month.